Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I got something pretty cool, something different for y'all, and I'm excited to share it with y'all. Check this out. This is the a total A6 Performance 7-inch radio display. Woo! Now, I've never had a touchscreen radio in my car, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be way better than my 2003 radio that came with my truck. So, let's check it out. Here's a couple of features that they are boasting on their box. Apparently it has a two second boot up time. It'll work with CarPlay and Android Auto. This is a Bluetooth lock and Bluetooth microphone. Pretty much your screen can be locked if you're valeting your car and you don't want people to access your personal information. There's three ways for this radio to connect to the internet, which is Bluetooth tethering, USB tethering, and Wi-Fi. If you didn't know, Bluetooth tethering and USB tethering is just ways for your mobile device to share internet to the stereo. This radio also features a reverse cam that shows these lines when you're backing up and also a real-time camera for your rear camera. And this one, it allows you to connect a front camera to your car and you could access some beautiful files straight on this radio. You. <laughs> Now that's just some of the features that they promote on their box. There's quite a few more things and we'll get to that later, but let's check out what they give us in the box. Whoa, they've already provided a wire harness that's already set up for your car. No, I'm just kidding. These are wires that plug into your car's wire harness. And on the other side, a total provides the wire harness that plugs into their head unit. This plug is for the rear camera and other Bluetooth options. These are RCA wires meant for setting up amplifiers or subwoofer. Here's two USB cords. One is for external storage such as a USB flash drive. The other USB cord is specifically for phones such as an iPhone, Android, or some other phone that I didn't know existed. These are line out converters. Essentially, you hook up your speakers to these and then you could plug them up to an amplifier. This is a GPS antenna and yes, it can work without internet. A total also provides an external microphone. Oh yeah. Here's some brackets and screws meant for universal fitment. Oh, and a little frame just in case there's an excess gap outside the radio. Here's some paperwork. I highly recommend reading all the features because there's a ton to go through. Oh, here we go. Sheesh. It's very lightweight and compact. This is the radio from my Honda Prelude. Check out how big and bulky it is compared to the Ototo head unit. The new head unit has a lot more room in the back side. The buttons are nice and clickety, but I prefer the volume knob so I could change my volume a lot faster. But I guess we'll see. The Atoto A6 uses the Android operating system, and when I think of Android, I don't think of the prettiest layout or user interface. So I'm really surprised with how this interface looks. The home screen is pretty minimalistic. There's a widget, a few icons, and a few icons on the bottom. And even if that's too much, you could press on an icon and delete the icons and clean up your screen even more. The interface is fast and responsive. It doesn't seem glitchy. It's pretty smooth in my opinion. Gestures. I was surprised to find this out. This is pretty cool. So if you press on the screen with two fingers and slide upward, that's gonna open up the multitask screen. You'll see all the different windows that are open. If you use two fingers and slide down, it'll take you back to the home screen, no matter where you're at. You can even double tap with two fingers and it's gonna bring up the equalizer. You'll have seven different options to choose from, which is rock, classical, and etc. And lastly, you can use three fingers and drag up or down. This allows you access to the screen brightness and you can slide it up pretty easily on the right hand side. Oh, and I just found this out. You can use three fingers and slide left or right. It'll bring up the sound. And from there, you can slide it with your finger to adjust the volume really quickly. So that might make up for not having a physical knob for the volume. I don't know, maybe it'll just take some time to getting used to. I think the radio interface looks really nice too. It's very sleek and modernized. It doesn't look cheesy or cheap design in my opinion. I'm not sure if I could change the color of the background or set a background, but right out the box, it doesn't look bad at all. I really like how you could go in here and rename a station. So instead of having these radio stations on the bottom, you can rename them to whatever you want. That way you can just click and go. Instead of trying to memorize each radio station. 
Ooh, CarPlay. This is one really cool feature. So with CarPlay, you could connect to it using a wire or Bluetooth. Almost every new radio has this, but CarPlay is a must have. A little cool feature that I like about CarPlay is that when you change the music, the background kind of changes as well with the album artwork. And I like how I can change my music by using the buttons on the radio instead of having to go on my phone and manually select it myself. Unfortunately, Android Auto only works with the wired connection. Now, onto the equalizer. This is a really big part of this radio. One major feature about this radio is it has 36 band frequency. So there's literally 36 different options that you can adjust to play with the sound of your music. So here you can easily swipe and make all the adjustments to the frequency, or you can click the switch button and you can drag up and down in each bar of the frequency to dial in each sound. And by scrolling left and right, you can access all 36 bands of frequency. Sound field, this helps with staging the sound of your audio system. It's pretty neat, and I like how you have the interface to just slide your finger around to, to redirect the sound. Time correction, this is some really advanced stuff. The idea behind time correction is you're adjusting the sound between the left and right speakers. So when you're in the driver's side, if the left and right speaker are both getting the sound at the same time, it's gonna sound a little off. So with this time correction, you can delay the audio on the driver's side and adjust it to where it really does sound like you're in the center of both speakers. I'm pretty sure it's much more complex than that, but yo, that's some advanced settings. My truck radio could not do stuff like that. <laughs> All right, so that was just a list of cool and useful features that I found on the head unit. And now what's a head unit review without testing out the audio quality. I already have the head unit installed in my truck. So just for reference, I'm in my Honda Civic and we're gonna listen to how my OEM stereo sounds compared to the head unit. So yeah, this is auxiliary. So the quality isn't gonna be as good as USB, but let's check it out. Not bad, not bad. Lacking some bass. Max volume, kinda loud. All right, now I'm in the truck. Let's see how this radio compares to the Honda Civic radio. Ooh. Sounds really good, really clear and cool. Let's put the volume up. Oh, clear fingers. Oh, and I forgot to mention that YouTube does work on this head unit. You just can't use it in the Apple CarPlay. You'd have to go to home, use the YouTube app on the head unit, click on a video, and voila, look at that. In and out, like right now. Pretty nice. So what are my thoughts on the Atoto A6 performance head unit? Well, I really like the interface. It looks really clean. It's sleek. It's really smooth and easy to use. I really like how it has CarPlay. If you have an Android phone, you can use Android Auto. The sound quality is much better. My girlfriend drives the truck every day. So when I put in the new head unit, she noticed the difference and really likes this head unit a lot more than the OEM one. And lastly, I'm super happy that this head unit can play YouTube because in Apple CarPlay, they don't allow you to watch YouTube, you know, for distraction and whatnot. So it's really cool that outside the Apple CarPlay app that you can still watch YouTube videos. So that's definitely a huge plus for me. I honestly can't think of any cons to this head unit. I can't be too picky, man. I mean, at this price point, at the time of this video, this is going for about $220, I think. But they also have a huge discount on it right now. If you go on Amazon right now, I think it's going for about 160, give or take. Definitely a five out of five stars. Great price, great product, great usability interface, and it checks all the stuff I want in a touchscreen radio. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, Autoto also manufactures a few other external devices. For example, they have the rear camera. It's sold separately, but I bought one myself and installed it, and I'm super happy with 
the rear camera view. When you go in the reverse, the reverse camera will come on and when you go back in the drive, it'll turn off all by itself. They also have their own dash cam. This head unit also lets you connect to that dash cam and view the files in the memory card. They also have their own OBD2 scanner that you could hook up to the head unit and view your check engine light codes. What? They have a steering wheel remote controller in case your car is so old and you don't have the buttons on your steering wheel like my cars. And yo, they also have a tire pressure monitoring system. All these products that I just mentioned, they have an app. So you could connect it to your head unit and mess with it, man. It, there's a lot of cool things you could do with this. And I think for, you know, just under 200 bucks at this moment, it's a great deal. So yo, hop on it. I'll have a link down in the description below. If you really like this review, let me know in the comments below and maybe I can make another video on some other head units. All right guys, thanks for dropping by. I'll see you on the next one. Deuces.